You know, even just the title, when you talk about the Empress of Haiti, Haitians don't know who that is. Um, we don't even remember the first territory. When we first did independence, the country was not a republic. We created an empire. So we had an emperor and an empress first. It's after the, the assassination of the, of the emperor that they came up with the republic. So every time somebody said, oh, la première république noire, la première république noire, that's bullshit. You did not create la première république noire. You created the first black empire. And that's a lot more than the republic. The republic was barely just what is the West Department now? It's nothing. Please. Okay? So uh, the Empress, uh, she learned to read, read and write. She used to teach um, to, to treat people with natural herbs, not with plants. And she lived to be 110 years old. So she, yes. Went through all of slavery. The independence come. Survived this island by 52 years, and any government that was doing something that was not in the interest of the people, she would write you a letter and say, you know, we didn't create this country for that. What you're doing here is totally out of order with why we created this country. And always spoke her mind. Calm, quiet, determined, but clear. And in fact, the second emperor of Haiti, Emperor Faustin Premier, when he was in power, uh, he had taken a decision that she thought was not in, was not proper. So she wrote to him and told him, you know, you should not do that. Uh, and um, at first he was annoyed with her. Then when he learned that this is the first empress of the country, blah, blah, blah. She said, and she's very old, she was 108 at the time. He says, well, you know, he sent her an invitation to come and have dinner with him in the palace. She wrote him a letter saying, I do not have dinner with people who has the founder's blood on their hands. That was her clear, quiet, tranquil answer. And, you know, it's, well, you know, she you know, he sent her other invitation. The last invitation, she just write a big N O N on the paper and sign. No explanations, no talk. Now he decides, well, it's because she's very old that she can't come to port au -Prince. So he's going to go visit her. So when he went, her walls, her, her doors are closed, her windows are closed. She's inside her house by herself. He's knocking. She's not answering. So a soldier said, well, you know, the door is not very, you know, I could just bust this door open. And at that moment, I think the light came to the emperor's head. He says, no, you don't understand. The woman who's inside, even if I come in with an entire battalion, she will only do what she wants to do. <laughs> so he just removed his big crown, multi-million dollar crown, removed all his tra-la-la emperor ship stuff, put all of them in the golden carrots, took his horse, rolled up his t-shirt and shirts, sleeves, and went back to Border Press. Didn't stop any of the things that were prepared for him. And she died uh, 110 in St. Mark about two months before, sent for people to make her coffin. When they finish doing it, they bring it to her. She write her name in the coffin. Marie-Claire Rose, Félicité Bonheur, Destiny. Bonheur, uh, widow of Jean-Jacques Destiny. Oui? The liberator of Haiti. That's what she wrote in her coffin. And, uh, and she passed a few weeks later. She prepared all her stuff. No but I've seen since then, we've also, because of, of course, since we named the foundation after her, we, our mission is to do the things that she used to continue with what she used to do. So natural healing with natural plants, we deal with that, with history, we deal with that. And we also started a research about 12 years ago, research on centenarians in IT. And we were stunned. There's so many people in this country who live over 100 years old. It's just not funny. And you meet them, 105, going up and down, can't stop with big basket on their heads coming down to sell. 115. The oldest person we met is 132. What's 132? Oh, they should be in the Guinness World Record. Well, yes, Elina Daiti. In fact, when we first met her, she was 122. 
Uh, and the woman walked up a stairs, and I was like, what's this? She's like that, up the stairs, down the stairs, and anything she says, she's dancing to her. She said, but how is your health? Me? I'm fine, don't you see that? <laughs> yeah, because usually people say when you're old, your body is kind of stiff and you can't, you know. So she's always demonstrating that in her body there is no such thing as stiffness and pain and can't bend down. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Hmm? No, she passed uh, seven years ago. She passed at the 132. You go to her church, she's, at the, she's a leader. She walks two hours every Sunday to her church and sing louder than anybody else in the church. So anyway, anyway so this is uh, Dr. Solvi Empress, and we're in just about moving into our new area. So this is Fondation Michael Rose. These are the volunteers. We only work with volunteers, no personnel, no, everything is done by volunteers. 